is happening guys it is Dan Alad 1989 welcome back to the Hurryford United career this is episode 80 now tracking our minds back to the last episode as you guys know we kicked off the Premier League season and boy did we have to fight for it we had a 2-1 victory at home against West Ham again we had to really fight for that win because West Ham got one back on late and tried to come back at us at the end of the game thankfully we held out for the win and then we went away to Fulham and we had to rotate the team just to keep fresh legs on the field. We got an early goal and then Fulham really tried to come back at us and we did manage to hold on defensively and win the game. Same with the Brighton game. We tried to push early in the game. We got a good few chances and it took a substitution of Patrick Roberts to get the winner after the 80th minute or so. So we did get nine possible points out of possible nine with three wins at the start of the season. But we really had to fight for it. But if that's the fight that we will show for the rest of the season, then I can't wait to see if we do manage to get up there to fight for the Premier League title as we do want to fight for the Premier League title in this season. So we will get transfer deadline day out of the way. We then have Wolves at home. We then have Barcelona. Yep, Barcelona in the Champions League, which we will simulate. We then have Newcastle away and we have Crystal Palace at home. So entertaining lineup for you guys today, as we will do with all the cup games in this season i will be simulating them unless we get to a quarter final semi-final or final and so on you guys know how that goes <clears throat> so what i will do is i will start simulating in the transfer deadline day if any transfer news comes up i shall let you know transfer news for you guys then as you can see brighton have tried to run in and steal tara mings for 12.7 million pound it is not going to happen under no circumstances i am going to reject that he's going nowhere Another transfer offer then guys, it's another bid for Conor Gallagher, we've had quite a few transfer bids for Conor Gallagher obviously in the last episode and the start of this episode you can see here Liverpool £47 million, well unless they're willing to offer me £80 million for Conor Gallagher to go then he's going to go nowhere, I will delegate it because obviously if they offer me the kind of money that I want for him <clears throat> I will quite happily accept it. But unless they're offering anything between 85 and 75 million pound, Conor Gallagher is going nowhere. Another piece of transfer news for you then, guys. Aston Villa have come in for Patrick Roberts. Now, this is an interesting one because before that episode we just did and Patrick Roberts getting that late winner, I would have considered moving him on just for the money. Now, Patrick Roberts has kind of persuaded me to keep hold of him and I kind of don't want to let him go now because he is a good backup left winger to bring on so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delegate it and start off at 20 if they offer me anything above 15 and that's asking some money for him at his age as well he's only valued at 12 if they're interested at that kind of price I will let him go but to be honest as you can see two hours left in transfer deadline there there's probably not going to be enough time for them to get a deal done anyway even if they offer me that kind of money let's have a look Tommy Doyle well with one hour left in the transfer window that's not going to happen and we'll keep an order Tommy Doyle anyway so we'll get rid of that there's another one for Kirk Wilson again the last hour not going to happen not going to get a deal done and I can't replace him and Conor Gallagher they're not interested with that either so <clears throat> that looks like transfer deadline date complete guys as you'll see they're probably not interested in signing Patrick Roberts now anyway so we will just get rid of these emails and then we'll do a wrap up of who's gone where not they're not interested that's fine close that uh, that's all the youth players I'll sort that out later <clears throat> so we'll do a wrap up now guys of who's gone where and who's bought who we'll see if there's any more weird and strange signings and we'll see who's been the most expensive signing so the most expensive signing of the window Jude Bellingham has left Crystal Palace and gone to Atletico Madrid for 113 million pounds Bernardo Silva has left Napoli because he left City to go to Napoli he's now gone to Real Madrid for 89 and a half million pound um, not sure who he is created player there but he's gone to Inter for 81 million pound um, there's another one there that's gone to Arsenal uh, £80 million pound for him. Let's have a quick look. Van der Beek has left Real Madrid and gone to Juventus. £77 million. Pound. I'm just trying to remember ones from before the ones that left. I think these are all new ones. Juventus I've got rid of. Uh, Dybala now towards Barcelona. That's one, uh, sorry, £61.5 million pound there. Dybala making his way out. 
Let's have a look. Any other big sales here? Uh, Lucas Hernandez going from Chelsea um, to Real Madrid there for £56.8 million. Pound. Any other big ones that stand out? Luke Shaw has left Napoli after going from Manchester United to Napoli. He's now gone to Seville for £54 million pound at the age of 31 now. Billy Gilmore has gone to Leipzig for £54 million pound as well. Let's have a look. Mendy here making his way to Juventus. £52 million pound from um, Real Madrid. Any other big ones? Or is that it? Devon Wrench there going to um, Borussia Dortmund sorry, for 48 point nine million pound and obviously Tyler Wall our deal um, I think that's about the big ones or oh, Ben White they're moving to um, I think that's the Atalanta unlicensed Atalanta for 43 million pound and that looks like your wrap up guys so a couple of big deals there some big money spent and Drew Bellingham getting the most for or the biggest signing of the window anyway so that's the window completely closed now guys I shall simulate forward to the first game of the episode which is at home to Wolves here we are then guys in the first played game of the episode we are at home we're at the Edgar Street Stadium we have Wolves today every time we've played Wolves either last season or the time before when we played them they've always done very well against us they've always beaten us by 1-0 we've always drawn with them they've always got the better of us I want to change that in this game. I want to make sure they don't get the better of us. We get the better of them. As you can see, we've started off brilliantly and they've lost two games and only won one. So we've had a much better start to the season than they have. We need to show it on the pitch. As you can see, player to watch today, Harry Wilson, who has been on form in these first three games or so. And unlucky to not get a goal in that game when he hit the crossbar with the free kick. But hoping he will get himself a goal today. So... I'll wait for the lineups, guys, and we'll get straight into the football. This is how we line up today, then, guys, as you got Josh Griffiths in goal. Lamptey, uh, David Carmo, we have Maitland Niles, Tyron Mings and Tommy Doyle in defence, Conor Gallagher and Dominguez in midfield, Harry Wilson, Torre and Dembele up top. Our strongest 11 is out today, hoping that we will get a comfortable win. So let's not waste any time, let's get straight into the football. Ball lofted forward by Josh Griffiths and trying to get ahead on that with Torre, but it's a decent header down by the Wolves man and it's Adama comes running at Tariq Lamptey and Lamptey stops him in his tracks with a good tackle. Here's Conor Gallagher, give this to Maitland Niles, round the corner towards Dominguez. Dominguez trying to turn his man here, some decent footwork there and it's Harry Wilson at the edge of the box and that's a very good tackle to stop Harry Wilson getting on it but Dominguez picks that up with a very good interception. Use Maitland Niles again, Dembele is at the edge of the box here, look for Dembele, see if I can get an early shot on target, what a save by the goalkeeper. Here's Dominguez picking up the ball in midfield, going to try and find a through ball here for Torre, straight through the middle, that is a wonderful ball by Dominguez and Torre makes it 1-0, what a strike from Torre, I mean the pass was exceptional from Dominguez, but talk about a top draw finish, look at that ball straight down the middle through the gap, Torre takes one touch and then bang, hits that low and hard in the bottom corner to put us 1-0 up against Wolves. Wolves have themselves a throw on the far side here and trying to get back at us after conceding. They have had a little bit of the ball but we do pick up the ball here and Dominguez is sprinting forward here. He's already found one good ball to Torre. Can he find his second? He certainly can. Torre with another effort on goal. This time the goalkeeper stops Torre getting his second goal of the game and getting our second goal of the game. Dominguez and Torre linking up very, very well in this game and that was going in. The goalkeeper had to stop it. Let's see if we can find it. Torre again here. It's actually Mings going up for it. The goalkeeper collects comfortably. There's Lanty sprinting forward down the line looking for Harry Wilson approaching half time here guys and I just want to try and get a second if we can before half time Conor Gallagher with a flick over the top looking for Torre again getting in behind and he was fouled I didn't see much contact there but the referee says that is a foul on Torre taking him down there in the box and we have a penalty it's not a handball decision this time it was actually a foul 
Torre taken down in the box and Harry Wilson steps up to take it I am just very tempted in fact I'm not tempted I'm going to give it to Torre he's already scored in this game he was taken down in the box can Torre put us 2-0 up before half time I'm going to go power bottom right and the goalkeeper spotted it and saved it not the best at taking penalties I've got to admit We'll swing this in and see if we can get a chance with Torre from the middle and it drops to Dembele and it drops to Harry Wilson firing it towards the back post and it'll probably clear and that's probably going to be and is half time into the second half we go then guys and Torre gets us an early goal in the first half we get 1-0 up and we get a penalty just before half time obviously I miss it because you know the goalkeepers are just that good at saving penalties on this game and I'm not very good at taking them to be honest but we have a healthy lead we've had the majority of chances in this game and Harry Wilson was fouled there but never mind play will continue we've had bringing the ball forward here out of our own half we just tried to push forward there and we were intercepted and Wolves are coming forward here and looking dangerous with Pedro Neto on the outside ball in towards the box Lampton needs to get to the header first he didn't and thankfully they have missed for Fana there with the header at the far post had he got that on target they would have been level making three changes here guys Maitland, Niles, Carmo and Mings all off O'Reilly, Amadou and I forgot on my own third substitution there and Mlengsar on forgot which uh, substitutions I brought on for you then just making defensive changes to um, see, see this game out make sure that we've got the legs just to see this game through and make sure that we don't concede and Wolves get level in this game because they have been better in the second half here Wolves kept hold of the ball better as you can see here and they're testing our back line so some fresh legs in defence just might make the difference as you can see passing the ball around very well here Dominguez should have stole that ends up giving a foul away gives advantage away but they are playing some good stuff here Wolves looking for the ball over the top and I brought Amadou on to try and do exactly that stop them getting forward let's get this ball forward if we can to Torre if we can head that down towards Dembele see if I can get a decent pass through to him onto O'Reilly try and chip this over the top for Torre who's had a fantastic game he's turned well he's got into the box effort away and that is a brilliant save from the Wolves goalkeeper Wolves coming down the line here and not giving up on trying to get a goal back in this game I'm hoping that we'll be able to pinch the ball here at the end of the game as you can see going into the last minute now probably just added time hoping we can pinch it as we've done there get forward and get a second in this game because to be honest we should have had two or three but can Torre get through here and just couldn't find the right pass there from Matt O'Reilly there goes the final whistle with one minute added on we will get a win but it's only a slender win back at the menu then guys and we got in front early thanks to Torre with a brilliant finish I might add in the bottom corner low and hard as you can see here on your screen he's been brilliant since signing him Torre and I really think as I said I think he's going to be one of the top goal scorers for us this season but we should have had one or two more we got the penalty before half time we didn't convert more my fault than anything and we had a few chances in the second half but Wolves did try and come back at us so we kept the clean sheet we got the three points not the worst thing but we do need to be scoring more goals as you can see here next against Barcelona in the Champions League I am going to completely swap the team round, guys because like we said we want to concentrate on trying to win the Premier League this season so I will simulate this game I'll swap the side around side all change round then guys as you can see I've put Hazard on I've put Kirk Wilson on I've also put Fernandez on Marco Royce and uh, O'Reilly in midfield together Maitland Niles sits in the sitting position I've gone Kalasinac, Maleng Sar, Amadou and Ethan Laird in the defensive positions I've put Acosta in goal as you can see on their team they have Leon Morley sitting in centre defensive midfield yeah so I'm not expecting to win this because it is Barcelona so let's just have a look how the result goes it finishes 1-1 I can quite happily deal with that uh, they score first and it's actually Hazard who scores for us after 24 minutes to give us a 1-1 I am more than pleased with that 1-1 against Barcelona that shows you how much this team has come along since we started the series in League 2 we just drew 1-1 with Barcelona I will definitely take that so what's Marco Royce saying to me here boss I know you're talking about a different position yep You'll do for me, Marco Royce. Not a problem, Matt. 
And what's that? Just available? Yeah, I know about Torre. He must have received the red card in the last time he played in the Champions League because I couldn't play him then, but never mind. So we have Newcastle in the next game. Is it home or away? We're away at St. James's Park, so I'll see you there, guys. Here we are then in the second played game of the episode. We are away at Newcastle, we're at St. James's Park. And this is going to be no easy game. Newcastle have had a brilliant start to the season. As you saw earlier in the episode where the table was, Newcastle have had just as good a start to the season as we've had. So I think both of us are in the top five, top four maybe. I'm not sure, but I am not going to underestimate this Newcastle team. We have gone full strength. We're back to full um, obviously our starting lineup because we've rotated the lineup against Barcelona. We got the 1 1. So I'm not going to underestimate them. As you can see, Curtis Jones on the pitch. They have Martial on the pitch. They have some decent players. We need to make sure that we're on top form. We've had to fight for every point so far. We need to do so here. So Muller in net, as you can see. Uh, Yuri Mina in defence. Michael Keane in defence also. Oxlade Chamberlain in um, midfield with... Uh, who was that? Uh, uh, Jones in midfield with Raya as well. Martial up top. So they have got a very decent lineup. We just need to make sure that we are better today. So I've only made the one change. Uh, Maitland Miles was still a bit tired from the last game. So I've put um, Amadou in for where Maitland Miles was. But as we line up, Josh Griffiths in goal. I've gone Lamptey. Uh, Kamu, Amadou in the sitting position, Mings and Tommy Doyle in defence, Conor Gallagher and Dominguez in midfield, Harry Wilson, uh, Torre who's been brilliant since signing him so far and Dembele on the far side so it's not going to be an easy game this one but we haven't had an easy game yet this season hopefully this will be our first comfortable win. Newcastle coming down the line here and looking dangerous early in this game we just need to stand defensively strong here and I think that came off Tommy Doyle's arm there he went to block it and I think they've got a free kick at the edge of the box they certainly have just before the 15 minute mark here it hits Tommy Doyle's arm they've got themselves a free kick but Conor Gallagher with a decent header away and Newcastle will pick up the ball here Dembele is forward but can't get on it and they've kept all the possession here and Dembele does steal it gets that ball round the corner to Torre if Dembele can make me a forward run here I'll see if I can ping him in behind they've got everybody up the pitch and not in defensive positions here round the corner towards Harry Wilson if he can bring it down and he just couldn't sort his feet out there Harry Wilson and Newcastle try and come back at us it's a decent tackle there David Camu doing the job there is Tommy Doyle trying to get this forward Dominguez is round the corner quick back heel towards Dembele looking for Torre at the edge of the box here if he can turn and get an effort away which he can that is a very good stop by the Newcastle goalkeeper Torre has been brilliant at the start of this season since signing him and he did look like he was going to get the opener there if it wasn't for the Newcastle goalkeeper making a brilliant save let's try and find him again here Torre up for the header and he does find the opener he just didn't want to do it with his foot he wanted to do it with his head Torre as we just said has been brilliant since signing him he got a debut goal he has really been involved in the play and look at that Torre gets up what a header that is free in the middle well on the penalty spot really and he heads that home to put us 1-0 in not long till half time here now guys and just trying to get rid of that up the pitch to make sure Newcastle cannot get an equaliser before half time they're putting a little bit of pressure on here towards the end of the second half and I don't want to concede before half time just getting a good touch on that they're a decent effort off the top of the grass bar and thankfully the half time break here we go in the second half then guys and Torre has an early chance which the goalkeeper makes a good stop with and Dominguez has just stole the ball there never mind he's just give it away uh, yeah uh, Torre has a very good chance which the goalkeeper makes a brilliant stop and then from the same corner he goes and scores a brilliant bullet header and David Cam who's just committed a foul there at the edge of the box Newcastle have themselves a free kick here just outside the edge we did manage to get 1-0 in front, but Newcastle were pushing the pressure towards the end of the sec of the first half, or the second half of the first half. And now we've just committed a foul with David Carmu, and they have the chance to equalise from a free kick here. I'm just going to put Lamptey, who's probably not the tallest guy to put on the end of the wall, Mings in as well, and the shot comes in, and thankfully it hits the side netting. Good pass forward, Curtis Jones around the corner, and they've got 
a decent bit of possession here. It's a good shot, and Josh Griffiths had to be on guard there to make sure he made a good save. Newcastle passing the ball around quickly and very efficiently. They get a good shot away and almost got the equaliser. They've been pushing for it. They got that free kick just after the second, or just at the start of the second half, and they've been dominant since then. They've certainly woke up here in the second half, and we need to make sure that we don't concede and they don't get on level terms, but we do get the tackle in there with Torre. I try and get this to Lamptey on the far side, who is quick enough to be beating his man, and he's only ran it out over the line. That's probably more my fault than it is Lamptey's fault, and Newcastle pick up the ball again here and come forward. They've looked a lot more dangerous in this second half David Cameron using his strength there to make sure that they don't get in behind forward ball towards Torre and Dembele has continued his run here that's a wonderful ball in by Torre Dembele can he make it two he certainly can the pressure from Newcastle is not enough to stop Dembele getting forward and getting our second of the game Torre with a goal and an assist now how about that from a pass from Torre have a look at that ball over the top that is a wonderful pass in towards Dembele and Dembele continues his goal scoring form from last season to put us 2-0 in front 85 minutes gone here guys and Newcastle still trying to come forward here even though we've got a second they are trying to continue their pressure here's Curtis Jones down the line and can try and get a block in here with Lamptey which we do well and Newcastle get a throw on the near side here three minutes of normal time remain plus stoppage time and Newcastle are just pushing here to try and get anything back in this game David Cameron with a good block there and making sure the cross didn't come in Lamptey try and steal this if he can get another tackle in and it's another throw they just can't seem to get in at the minute Newcastle because defensively we have been very very strong but they have a lot of black and white shirts forward here from a decent ball in Tommy Doyle at the back post to try and stop it not needed because they head wide of the target three minutes added on I'll play it out for you here we've got two goals in this game and pretty much Tory, as you can see there trying to win the header has been the star man in this game he's got the goal he's got an assist on Dembele's goal and he has been a superb signing at the start of this season really hoping he'll continue his form but Newcastle trying to get in here shot over the top of the bar and thankfully there goes the full time whistle it's a 2-0 win away back at the menu then guys and a 2-0 hard fought victory there because Newcastle definitely tried to put the pressure on us at stages of the game as you can see the Josh Griffiths keeps his clean sheet because he had to make some very good stops and defensively we were brilliant we kept them out we really tried to keep their chances to a minimum but then at the other end we made chances obviously Torre was fantastic on getting the first goal with the header and then supplying the second goal to Dembele so let's advance forward here and we ha we actually have a F oh, sorry it's EFL Cup round against Rotherham so what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the side round and we will rotate it for this game there you go then guys side all swap round so Rotherham United we should have a fairly simple win here with the likes of Roberts and Kirk Wilson and Fernandez on the pitch obviously you can see Marco Royce with Matt O'Reilly uh, Maitland Niles in the sitting position Kolasinac Amadou Malang Sarr uh, Ethan Laird and Acosta in goal it should be a very straightforward victory here I can't see it going any other way it's a 3-1 victory as you can see here they score first O'Reilly equalises shortly after we actually missed the penalty with Maitland Niles Kirk Wilson scoring and Conor Gallagher coming on and scoring so I expected a comfortable win against Rotherham with even with a rotated side we had some big names on the field still so we move into the last game of the episode then guys we are unbeaten at the start of the season so far we just about got the win against Wolves we've beaten Newcastle 2-0 can we make it another win and beat Crystal Palace let's have a look at the table at the minute as you can see beating Newcastle was huge because Newcastle were in second I said at the start of the game that they were right up there with us so we have played five and won five I want to keep the wins coming can we make it six out of six but Crystal Palace as you can see are in seventh place so again not going to be an easy game third and final played game of the episode then guys we are at home we're at the Edgar Street Stadium and we have Crystal Palace as we saw at the menu they are in seventh place not had a bad start to the season at all we are unbeaten I want to keep it that way after 90 minutes 
five out of five so far I want to make it six out of six we said we want that Premier League title this season we have started on the way to being there but we've got to keep our form going we've got to keep the goals coming we've got to keep the chances coming and as you can see we've only conceded one goal at the start of the season defensively I knew we were going to be strong because of the signings that we've made we've improved defensively massively and partly because of the fact as you can see on the camera Josh Griffiths is in goal so really had a belting start to the season and I want to make it six out of six because that would just be what well, talk about a dream start to the season we've not had comfortable wins we've really had to fight for our wins but we have had wins I want to make sure that we get another win here at home so we'll wait for the lineups guys and then we'll get straight into the football there you go then, guys as we see Josh Griffiths in goal we've gone Lamptey, Malang Sar, Maitland Niles um, Mings and Tommy Doyle in defence Conor Gallagher and Dominguez in midfield I've gone Harry Wilson, Torre and Dembele up top Torre I have to say has really stood out from the crowd so far and he's been excellent let's have a quick look at Crystal Palace's lineup. and see if there's anybody that's originally still there or that we know and they've got Wijnaldum in midfield must be getting on now in this um, save now Wijnaldum but not much better than they were last season to be honest so I'm hoping again for another comfortable win but let's find out Crystal Palace pushing us early here down the line and Tommy Doyle has missed out on an attack there ball into the middle and four minutes in Crystal Palace have hit the back of the net okay I didn't expect that to happen I was just talking about how defensively strong we've been we've conceded one at the start of the season four minutes in and Crystal Palace find the back of the net. Okay, Tommy Doyle nowhere near. Maitland Niles didn't get close. Malang Sar and Tyra Mings completely split. Josh Griffiths didn't get there. And we're one of them. Again, Crystal Palace hogging onto the ball at the minute. And I just can't seem to win the ball at all at the minute. They're passing it so well. And every time we get close, they just find another set of free feet. Another ball around the corner. They're in again here. And another pass around the corner. What? has happened in this game 11 minutes in and we are 2-0 down to Crystal Palace um, hmm. as I said we're talking about being defensively strong and Crystal Palace have just been on fire when we look at that they just completely split our defence and we're 2-0 down inside 12 minutes there's Malang Sar trying to send that over towards Dembele who brings it down well here and towards Torre and if we can get one goal back here and try and get in it we might have a chance in this game but 2-0 down can we try and find a reply here with Dominguez and Dominguez makes it 2-1 26 minutes gone now in this game and Dominguez has get one back or should I say got one back not get one back got one back I don't well I'm not sure what's happened at the start of this game Crystal Palace has just been absolutely on fire but Dominguez fires us or gets one goal back we need to push on here and try and get level in this game it's 2-1 here come Crystal Palace again here with the ball with these short snappy passes holding onto the ball well but Maitland Niles puts in a good tackle and we've really started to switch things on now Dembele around the corner towards Dominguez let's see if we can find Harry Wilson Harry Wilson around the corner towards Conor Gallagher to try and drop this towards the edge of the box I wanted to try and get it back towards Dominguez who was free but Crystal Palace intercept and stop us getting level in this game. It's not long till half time, one minute added on, and it's been a very, very explosive first half. Crystal Palace have been absolutely on fire. Dominguez gets one back for us. There goes the half time whistle. It's 2 1 at half time. Here we go in the second half, then, guys, and Crystal Palace were absolutely on fire in the first 12 minutes or so, getting 2 0 up we have managed to get one back with Dominguez and it's 2-1 currently but we've got a big job to do in the second half here to get back 55 minutes gone here and Crystal Palace have themselves a corner continuing their good pressure and cleared off the line there by Lamptey I think Josh Griffiths just had it covered another shot on target rattles off the top of the bar Crystal Palace again come forward and they give us the toughest test we've had so far yet but apparently that is a challenge there by 
Tyron Mings and he's given away a penalty. I didn't see much wrong with that challenge there from Tyron Mings. I think he was just the stronger of the two. And apparently it's a foul. I didn't think there was much in it. I thought that was quite soft. And they've got themselves a penalty. Crystal Palace to go 3-1 in front. I think he's going to go left. He does go left and we've saved it. Niles in midfield here over towards Dominguez. Try and play that into Tommy Doyle here and see if we can get forward and get level in this game. Crystal Palace have been very, very good. We kept the penalty out. Can we try and get on level terms here? Decent cross and Conor Gallagher is there with the header. We can get on level terms. 2-0 down inside 10 minutes and we have brought it back to 2-2 thanks to Conor Gallagher. Almost the end of the game here now, guys, and Crystal Palace still trying to break forward we've got on level terms the last thing I want to do now is concede late with two minutes added on we've got to be defensively strong here Tyron Mings to try and stop this they've got yellow shirts flooding into the box and thankfully he's missed it and that should be a draw in this game two minutes have added on two minutes have gone and there goes the full-time whistle talk about a comeback in the game press conference after the game then guys and it finishes 2-2. What a game of football that was. <sighs> I had to take a breather after that one. Uh, will you run beat and run? <sighs> it very, very well could have been. We have been on a good run of form, but Crystal Palace were just on fire at the start of that game. Two early goals. We were just all over the place defensively. Uh, were you grateful to get a draw? I really was grateful to get a draw. Yeah, we need to start games better. We definitely do because we did not start that game well at all. 2-0 down inside 12 minutes and we showed a lot of character to come back in that game. A close game. Are you happy with a draw? Um, didn't think... Uh, at least we didn't slip away points. That's what we need to say because we didn't lose so we didn't lose question. points. We still gain a point but what a game of football just no idea what happened at the start of that game we were defensively all over the show obviously Dominguez gets us back in it and then Conor Gallagher heads us 2-2 and obviously neither side could find a winner but I just genuinely didn't think we were even going to get anything out of that game I thought it was going to be our first loss of the season because Crystal Palace were absolutely brilliant all through the, the game they were just brilliant on the ball they really did what they had to do and explains their good start to the season so Five wins and a draw at the start of the season. 16 points. We have a gap at the top of the table. City are the closest to us with three wins and three draws. Newcastle, four wins and two losses, both on 12 points. But we stand at the top of the table after six games played, guys. Leave me a comment. Leave me your thoughts. Tell me all about it. Because, God, that was one hell of a game of football after Crystal Palace. So, like I said, guys, drop me a thumbs up. Thank you very much for tuning in. I will see you in the next one. It's been Daniel 1989. Love you, bye.